Hello everyone. This video will be about finding the first moment of area, or the centroid, for 2D shapes. The centroid can be considered the point at which all of the area acts. Or, if you imagine balancing a shape on the end of your finger, the centroid is the point at which you have to place your finger to stop this situation from being unstable. It's also useful to, f to find the, the, the coordinate of the centroid for calculations of simple beam bending, as this is what we call the neutral axis. We have two main tools for finding the centroid of a shape, one of which is symmetry, which states that the centroid will always lie on a line of symmetry. And by extension, we can say that if there is more than one line of symmetry, the centroid will lie at the intersection of these lines. The other main tool we have is this formula here, which states that the coordinate or the coordinates of the centroid of the whole shape times the area of the entire shape is equal to the sum of the coordinate or the coordinates of the elemental centroids times the elemental areas. Now this is probably best illustrated with an example. So what I have here is a T-shaped cross-section or lamina. And our objective is to find the centroid for this shape. The first thing we should highlight is the fact that we have a line of symmetry, which is represented here by the light blue dashed line. So from this, we should be able to tell that we've already got the y coordinate for the centroid, which is the distance from this line to the x-axis. So we can already write the g, which is the centroid, or the coordinates of the centroid, is equal to the x-coordinate, which is something to be found. And the y-coordinate, in this case, is halfway up this side of length 3. Therefore, is 3 over 2, or 1.5. So we already have the y-coordinate for our centroid. Uh, so it's just a matter of uh, now finding the x-coordinate. And for that, we use this formula here. So if we write it out x bar, which is the x coordinate for the uh, centroid of the shape, times the area of the whole shape, is equal to the sum of the elemental areas, centroids times their elemental areas. So now if we see the shape, and instead of considering it a T-shaped cross-section, we consider it two rectangles. That I've cut there using that green line. So. If we wanted to first calculate the area of the whole shape, well, you should be able to agree with me that the area of the whole shape is equal to the area of this rectangle here plus the area of this rectangle here. The area of this rectangle is 1 times by 3, which is 3. And the area of this rectangle is 1 times by 2, which is 2. So the area of the entire shape is 5. So from the left-hand side, we can write that 5x bar. So as for the sum of the elemental parts, well, we just consider each one one by one. So if we first consider this rectangle on the left, where is the x coordinate for the center of area of this shape? Well, if you imagine we've got two lines of symmetry, one in the green line here that I've just dashed in, and another one in this light blue line. And as we've said from point one, the centroid will lie at the intersection of these two points, these two lines even which is here, which is halfway down each side, which has x coordinate then of half of this side, side of length 2, which is 1. So we have 1 for the first shape, times the its area. And what is its area? Well, its area is 1 times by 2, which is 2. We're summing, so we add the next term, which is going to be the same thing for this rectangle. So what is the x-coordinate for the centroid of the shape? Well, again, if we do our line of symmetry down the middle, it's going to be at this point here, which is halfway along the side. But this is the point at which we have to be careful. We're talking about the x-coordinate from this origin. So it's not one half, it's this distance up to here, plus this distance in here. So we've actually got some of these two distances, which is 2 here, and half of this length, which is 1 half. So we end up with 2 and a half, or 5 over 2. 
So 5 over 2 times by the area of the shape, which is 1 times by 3, which is just 3. So now if we deal with this, we end up with 5x bar is equal to 2 plus 15 over 2, just times the 5 by the 3. So if we write the 2 in halves so that we can uh, add these terms, we end up with 4 over 2 plus 15 over 2, which is equal to 19 over 2. And therefore, if we divide by the 5 to get x bar, we get x bar as 19 over 2 times by 5, which is 10, which is a little bit less than 2, which is kind of what we expected, as we expected the center of area or the centroid to line up approximately here. So again, now we can fill in the x coordinate for this, which can go here, which is 19 over so that was an example of a shape that has one line of symmetry. But what about if we have no lines of symmetry? Such as this shape here. Well again, I've defined my origin is here, with x increasing going this way and y increasing going this way. And in this case, we can't apply symmetry to get one of the answers. So we need to do the, the calculation or apply the formula for both the x-coordinate and for the y-coordinate. But we can do this conveniently using vector column notation uh, to save us the, the effort, really, of doing the calculation twice. So if I write out the formula again, just to have it ready, x-bar times the area is equal to the sum of the elemental centroids times the elemental areas. And in this example, I'm going to split a rectangle like that. So we have one rectangle here, another rectangle here. So x bar, but now we're not talking about one coordinate, we're actually talking about two coordinates. So I'm going to write this as x bar, y bar, or in com if you like the column notation for the coordinate x bar, y bar times the area. Now what is the area of the whole shape? Well this is this area, which is the rectangle on the left, which is 2 times by 6, which is 12, plus this area, which is 2 times by 3, which is 6. So we have 12 plus 6, which is 18. So x bar y bar times by 18 is equal to. Now if we deal with, again, the element on the left. Just for this shape, we have a line of symmetry that passes through here and through center there. So the coordinate of the centroid for the left shape on the left-hand side will be in the center, which is halfway along this side and halfway up this side. So for the x coordinates, we have halfway along this side, which is going to be half of 6, which is 3. For the y coordinate, we're going to have halfway up this side. Half of 2 is 1. So that's the centroid for this elemental area, times its area, which is 12. And it's a summation, so we must add. And do the same thing for this shape. So for this shape, again, we've got a line of symmetry passing through here and through here. So the centroid will be at that point there, which will be this distance, which is halfway along the shape, plus all of this for the x-coordinate. So we have 6, which is the distance up to here, if you like, plus half of the distance of this side, which is 1. So 6 plus 1 is 7. And in the y direction, we just have half of the height of this side. So half of 3 is 3 over 2. What about the area of this side? Well, that's 2 times by 3, which is 6. So how do we deal with this situation? Well, if you follow the top line, so x bar times 18 is equal to 3 times by 12 plus 7 times by 6, we form one equation for x bar, and we do the same for the bottom line for y bar. So we say y bar times 18 is equal to 1 times 12 plus 3 over 2 times 6. So this is just a shorthand way of writing two sets of equations, if you like. So if we deal with the x coordinate first, we end up with 18 x bar is equal to 3 times by 12 which is 36 plus 7 times by 6, 
which is 42. So if we do the addition, we have 18 x bar is equal to 78. And so x bar is 78 over 18. We of course, cancel this down. And if we do the same again then for y bar, we end up with 18 y bar is equal to, in this case, 1 times by 12, which is 12, plus 3 over 2 times by 6. And just for ease, I'm going to write this out fully. So we have 18 y bar is equal to 12 plus the 2 here cancels with this to give 3. 3 times by 3 is 9. So we have 18 y bar is equal to 12 plus 9, which is 21. And so y bar is equal to 21 over 18. Just dividing by the 18 there. So we can say that the coordinate of the uh, centroid for the entire shape, G, is equal to our x bar value, which is 78 over 18, plus our y bar, um, comma with our y bar value, which is 21 over 18. So now we have the coordinate for the centroid of this composite shape. Thank you for watching my video, and I'll see you next time.